Hello everyone, I found a lot of media friends here. I would like to introduce myself. My name is Eric Zhao. I'm responsible for the design center of Xpon. We hope that the original design of our logo is able to be built into the design of the cars so that it can show the identity of users and especially at night when you look at the screen, it's very obvious that this is Xpon's P5 and no other models. So in this picture, you can see that we create that uh, what we call the celestial navigation inspired cockpit design. We want to make it sleek and neat to clear up the clutter with authentic, genuine materials so that when our car users are in the car, it creates a relaxing, comfortable environment so you can have a good rest. As you can see in this picture, what we present here it's a consistent design and our dashboard is floating. So within this driving space, it's more spacious and so many details can be elaborated later on for you. This ultra-wide aviation headrest, so it's a very soft, gives you the free range of movement, we install this panoramic glass roof. It is not just a glass roof. We also provide um, the uh, sunproof uh, curtains so that not only you will have a good vision within the car, but also um, it will block the sun for you. Within our interior, aside of the cabin, another key design feature is our trunk space because when driving, especially for traveling, trunk space is vital. So our trunk space reaches a 450 liter to accommodate a 5 to 20 inch suitcases or three golf bags. As you can see, we create a distance of cinema mode. When we lay down the front row seat through our voice command, we can initiate our cinema mode. And that design is actually inspired by uh, one of our car users. Uh, we installed this 47-inch projector screen to create the cinema mode. The second highlight, we can switch to our sleep mode. Because what we're thinking is that now that you can lie down within our vehicle very comfortably, with such a large screen, why not take a good nap here? Why not have a good sleep here? So we should do something more to fine tune this sleep mode for our car users. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Very happy to be here to walk you through the next generation autonomous driving system, s 3.5. Intelligence has been our core and true differentiator in automobile market because in the EV sector, the ultimate winner would be those who can deliver intelligence. So on intelligence, we must mention Xpilot. It is an, our advanced autonomous driving assist system. When we introduced an NGP for the first time, it is on our model P7. And we conducted a test drive for our media friends the 3,000 kilometer expedition. 
So during that journey, the, some KPIs that have been completed as shown on the slide. So you can see the ramp entering ascertain uh, success rate, the tunnel pass through rate, and the lane changing overtaking rate. And uh, for then our intervention per 100 kilometers is uh, 0 0.71, less than one time. That shows in the current phase for autonomous driving for X Peng. We are proud to say that we are the we are number one in China. And for P5, we are in the area of X Pilot 3.5. The core feature introduced in X Pilot 3.5 is NGP equipped with LiDAR. So now, I would like to show a video to you to illustrate that. If we're seeing that, the core NGP scenario, if we have to select one, then I think that it is the integrated manual and autonomous driving scenario. So in this juncture, our LiDAR can detect a world like this. From highway NGP, it has been achieved. And on our model P5, what we aim to achieve is a city NGP. The logic behind is very clear, because in days ago, I just read a set of data for our users, the time spent on highways is just a 10%, one tenth of their driving time. But if for the city road conditions, for the main road and the secondary roads, if we can extend our NGP to city road conditions, then it will cover 90% of our users' driving time. So this is the goal we aim to achieve on P5 through advanced autonomous driving system to penetrate every person's driving life. So the question is, why does advanced autonomous driving system need LiDAR? The answer is simple. As we are now, in city road conditions, it is a super challenging situation where we will encounter on highways, Sometimes, occasionally, we encounter pedestrians as well. And on city roads, and um, we'll see we have uh, scooters, electric bikes, especially for um, food delivery guys in every moment of your driving time. There would be some unexpected events that might happen while driving, so that requires us and close monitoring with our system to ensure safe drive. And also, there are many tunnels in Chinese cities and a lot of construction sites, road works, and which would become part of the frequent scenario in our driving situation in China. So every time, if we need to exit our autonomous driving mode when we encounter construction site, that would be very messy and complicated. And if our system can cover such, so many, that many complicated scenarios, and that we will achieve a more advanced level of autonomous driving, plus our millimeter grade uh, radars and HD cameras, and we are confident that with an, our autonomous driving system, we can cover most of our Chinese city's road conditions. Now, I would like to brief you. The LiDAR solution with our dual prism scanner. It is a quite in a state of art technology. With this technology, with less signal transmitters and receivers, and we can achieve equivalent effect. And every LIDAR has a 180 degree angle of vision. Through so this way, it can greatly increase the detection range and detection precision horizontally and vertically, and plus the cameras and millimeter grade radars, we can identify 
very small objects and also the 3D space. Now I would like to talk about our sensor combination. So for our P5 sensor combination, broadly speaking, we continue to use uh, the existing sensors installed on P7. When we launched the P7, uh, P7 was the most advanced uh, EV module back then. We used uh, 32 sensors, so we used uh, 13 cameras. And also, we used an, um, the millimeter uh, radars and uh, perception uh, sensors on P7 model. And we're also quite proud of the HD positioning, precision positioning capability through our GNSS and IMU and uh, high resolution map. We also add two LiDAR units as well. So we have about 34 sensors around the car to improve the identification of the car on some small opticals. Great. After this video, we can compare with Model 3 of our peers to compare with the hardware and software. We can see that the number of the sensors and the cameras and the precision of the cameras, etc. Now we have LiDARs units and the, the NGP and also the high precision maps that makes us more superior than the configuration of Model 3 with the superior hardware and software and our autonomous driving capabilities. We believe that we're able to bring more advanced autonomous driving functions in the Chinese road conditions. We've talked about the urban scenarios now, just now, that has mixed with pedestrians and cars, and it's like a signature scenario. And apart from that, we will have a lot of com complex and challenging scenarios. For example, the cutting end situation in traffic jam, and we also need to identify the small targets. And when we, when we encounter some of the construction sites and some small targets, we need to try to avoid them. This is a problem that deemed insolvable, but we can solve them through P5. For the autonomous driving of our x our goal is very simple. That is to be the most powerful in this class, and we also need to be the most powerful in the production class. With our current teams in x and our pipeline in our technology, as well as the hardware capability in our company, we believe that we were able to become the global number one in autonomous driving capability. And not just satisfied with leading in China. So in the next two years, my team with me will try our best to achieve this goal for Expo. That's what I want to share with you for autonomous driving. Thank you. Welcome our VP TV. Dear media friends, 
Good evening, see you again here. I'm very glad that I'm able to share with you from the 1024 to now what kind of achievement we've made and the characteristics of the P5. First of all, I would like to share with you a concept that is how, which we call the smart interaction that is able to suit the needs of the future trends and the current era. And we know that the biggest change in our car is autonomous driving. And we think that interaction in the car will also change along with the advancement of autonomous driving. So we have proposed a concept that is full scenario autonomous driving, and we try to enrich our life with car and try to make our life intelligent and regenerate all scenarios with the intelligence as well. The first thing we want to share with you is the human machine co-pilot concept. Why would I like to share this concept with you? Because we know that the current autonomous driving technology is not complete autonomous driving and it should need to go through an experience that is co-driven by human and machine together. So how can human and machine collaborate together to drive better? And how can we provide the delightful experience of driving for our customers and make it safe? And we have done a lot of tests and trial. This is the first trial that we've made. That is the safe test of autonomous driving. Please play the video for me. And this is the test of autonomous driving. It's the first time in the industry that we are able to tell our customers through the tests about the scope of autonomous driving so that we can build the trust between the car and machine. And by doing this, we are able to achieve the interaction between human and machine. And here is the in-car interaction in real situation. And from this video, you can see that we have provided a lot of interaction in car between people and machine. And just now, Sinjo has shared with us the x 3.5. When we started to provide more scenarios that we can collaborate with machine, we will try our best to make the co-pilot better and to improve the interaction between human and machine. This is the first one I want to share with you. And along with the advancement of autonomous driving in the future, human and machine interaction will surely focus on the voice control. And in 1024, we've already shared our capability on voice control. And all of our interaction of intelligence has achieved voice control. And in recent periods, we also push it a step further. Apart from the functions on the screen, we have covered more scenarios that can be controlled by voice. Hi, Xiao P. Please help me to change my lane. Finish. Hello, Xiao P. Can you help me? Can you help me to change the lane to the left? Complete it. 
So did you feel that it's like I have a driver to go with me and I'm giving the command to ask him to help me to drive the car? This is our expansion. And we also extend it to the third party SDK. We're going to work with a lot of partners so that there will be more third party application on external vehicles to support the full scenario functions. We're going to launch the functions that you can watch you could on the screen without touching the screen. And the next point I want to share with you is the foundation of our intelligent connection, that is digital ID. Many years ago, we need to go out with a wallet and a car key. And I believe that on my left pocket, I need to put in my wallet, and on the right, I need to put, on, put in my mobile phone and the keys. It's very complicated. But today, I never take out wallets and key. I just need to use the digital key of x to drive the car. It's very convenient. It makes me feel a quite different experience. What's the benefit of using the digital key? First, it's a very reliable, stable, and safe key. On P5, we've already achieved the 99.9999% 8, safety. It means that only once and in a thousand times that you are going to meet um, the failure of unlocking your car with the digital key, it means that you need to use the car for about uh, thousands of years to meet this kind of failure. So we have make it more reliable than the traditional physical key. And through this key, we are able to provide a kind of identity of, uh, of the owner. If I lend the car to my friends, then I don't need to worry about that. Because after I uh, lend the car to my friends, then I worry, do I need to adjust my seat or the rear mirror? Or do I need to change some of the private things in my screen? Or will it leak any private data? of my, the music or movie I like. And you don't have to worry about it because you are going to use the, your own ID and he's going to use his own ID. So with this kind of digital ID control, we're able to protect all the data and all those information of yourself to protect your pri privacy, to guarantee that all the digital products are able to achieve um, their functions and the digital key and ID has become the foundation of all the intelligence. Just now, Eric has mentioned that we have a lot of great hardware in P5 and you may ask one thing when you look at it. For all those fridge, or aroma, etc., even the theater, I've already found it on other models. So what's the features in P5? When we're thinking about that, we we actually start this process from the beginning of design, not just after the design. We think about the convenience of it and have done a lot of the combination of the hardware and software. And of course, we use the same hardware, but when you use it, it's quite different. Let's have a look at it. Hello, Xiao P. Hello, little P. Please initiate a sleep mode. Sure. The curtains are closing, the lamps are closed, in-car temperature 25 degrees Celsius set. The clock, your alarm is set. I myself tried several times. Every time after lunch, I went to our 
P5 fantastic car to take my nap, fantastic experience. So just with a one voice command, it achieves a multiple hardware connectivity and coordination to create a good nap and sleep experience for our users. And we have more user scenarios to provide to you, which will be shown in a Shanghai Auto Show. And welcome you to drop by our booth as well in Shanghai Auto Show. After uh, looking at uh, our in-car experience, and do you think that it's not enough? Let's uh, stretch it a little bit. Let's uh, coordinate uh, all the other hardware together in and outside the car. Hello, little plea. Please take off. Yes, sir. We are taking off. Hello, little P. Please around. Please take a tour. Yes, sir. We are taking a tour. Hello, little P. Please return. Yes, sir. When P5 is bringing you far away, you can bring your UAV as well to give you an even cooler experience. And you might think that this is just a very small example. Should we make it bigger? Likewise, in Shanghai Auto Show, please welcome to drop by our scenario to enjoy more, to learn more about uh, more diversified scenarios. And we have uh, talked about a lot of um, intelligent uh, interaction scenarios uh, thanks to the endeavors uh, paid by our team. Now we would like to invite uh, all our teammates and to come on up to the stage to say hi to us. Little P, please take off. UAV, please take off. Yes, sir. Now we are going to the P5 Premier. Okay, let me take you there. That concludes our P5 premiere. Next week, we're looking forward to meeting you at the 7.1H Hall in Shanghai Auto Show. Our booth number is 7804. And welcome all of you to take a photo with our fantastic new model P5. Good evening and goodbye. <laughs>